It's like a boss. I need your time for just a little. I need your word, it's instrumental. I need you to stop trying to humble me. I got a tough enough time loving me. I need to trust you won't come and leave and then pull the rug out from under me. It's called the gas hole, full documentary. And there's the they, they, and they have everything from they have everything from the 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 urban myth of the watered powered carburetor. The man came to the airfield one day with a 1946 Buick Roadmaster. He had invented a carburetor that was water injected and could get close to 100 miles per gallon. He told us that Shell Oil Company had bought the patent from him, which made him a millionaire. Which this guy who wrote to me completely dismissed. He completely dismissed any sort of uh, that, 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 that that exists because he sits in a cubicle and I sit in a fucking bedroom. All right, and he tries to just say that's just another media hoax. Oh, you know, they said Dewey beat Eisenhower or fucking, like, dumb shit like that. Okay? This, so this documentary, have everything from, like, the urban myths that, the, that these uh, water-powered cars existed. Um, the government has a car that runs on water, man. <laughs> they just don't want us to know because then we'd buy all the water. Then there'd be nothing left to drink but beer. And the government knows that beer will set us free. All right, you told us about the car a million times. Can you please talk about how hungry and horny I am? All the way up to actual, a retired um, scientist who worked for Shell. Who, you just have to watch this documentary. They were showing there was a book out that claimed that they could get 149 miles per gallon in the 1950s on like a Packard or a DeSoto. In 1977, the book Fuel Economy of the Gasoline Engine, which was published by the Shell Oil Company, documents that Shell scientists were able to achieve 149.95 miles per gallon on a 1947 Studebaker. This book is out of print and has disappeared from the Library of Congress. And by the 70s, this scientist who worked for Shell said they had gotten it up to 1,000 miles per gallon. All right? In February of 2007, they were able to interview a retired Shell scientist living in England. My name is David Blackmore, and I'm, I worked for quite some years in Shell research. I edited the book called Fuel, Fuel Economy of the Gasoline Engine. Uh, and we normally would test our fuels in real or, or sometimes prototype vehicles and engines that uh, we would have... Uh, contact with with the with the motor industry the motor manufacturers it began uh, something like 49 50 miles per u.s gallon and um, when the specials began it was um, they managed to get into the hundreds of miles per gallon but there was still some quite excitement in a few years before the, the thousand mile per gallon barrier was broken which i think didn't happen until the late 1970s i don't know why people think that it's it's absolutely impossible to improve the gas mileage. Some people feel that. I don't know why people feel like we can't come up with anything better than the gas combustion engine. It's complete fucking bu- It's the same level of bullshit as that there's an actual difference between a Democrat and a Republican. Watch this documentary, The Gas Hole. We're going to have the link up on the Monday morning podcast. Just watch this shit. And I, I don't know what to tell you. Some of it looks like, okay, they, they, they have this old guy going, you know, and this guy showed up and he had, it, it was a contraption made out of, you know, it was powered on water. And he raised a hood and we looked at it. I don't know, it just looked like a bunch of crap on there, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we looked at it and didn't think much of it because it was just a gadget as far as we were concerned. So we didn't think too, too much more about it. We were sitting there talking about it, and he, he said that Shell told him he couldn't rebuild uh, any more. Uh, and he says, they bought my patent and made me a millionaire. And then he claimed that Shell bought the patent, gave him a million dollars, and then he could never fucking, you know, make another one. Now, that's the kind of shit. Some old guy saying that he saw it on a salt flat in the 1950s. I'm not going with that. All right, I'm not that much of a fucking whack job. But when a guy who worked used to work for Shell is coming out saying that type of stuff, it's just it gets to the point like are all of these people nuts? You know what I mean?
There's no fucking way. I don't give a shit whether there's lead and gas, whether there's not lead and gas, how much the car fucking weighs, or any of that bullshit. There's no fucking way that in, in, in almost 40 years you can't do better than two more miles per gallon. I absolutely fucking refuse to believe it. I, 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 abs- I fucking refuse to believe it. I think it's complete fucking horseshit. It's just another way to, to keep control of the herd. Now, if you want to argue that you need to keep control of the herd or there's going to be absolute chaos so we have to keep cars down like that, I will listen to that argument. But if you're going to come at me and tell me that in 2000 fucking 11... Okay, when I'm reading shit that in the medical field, they can now grow a fucking, a new colon for somebody outside of the body. I read this this thing on that TED.com. This woman had a completely ulcerated large intestine. So they took some sort of tissue culture, whatever the fuck that means, out of her diseased colon, used that to then grow another one outside of her body. When they were done growing it, they took the old one out and put the new one in like she went down to Midas Muffler. And it totally fucking worked. Okay? I think you'll recognize this patient. We had to build your friend Loomis a whole new ear from scratch. Skin pigment, eye pigment, both almost identical. But all that's the easy part. Here's the real science. Up until like five years ago, you were looking at a colostomy bag. You would have a bag of shit right under her fucking right titty for the rest of her goddamn life. Her social life would have been over. Okay? All right. So it looks like my skin is doing a lot better. So I just take the bag... Fold it over and throw it away. So next what you want to do is just take a gauze and clean off. If they can do that. I also... (laughs) You're telling me. You're still going to tell me they can't do anything better than about 40 fucking 45 miles a gallon. You're really going to sit there and believe that in your goddamn cubicle. That they just can't fucking, just can't fucking figure it out. The only way I can get like 100 miles a gallon is if I ride on a fucking scooter. You, sir, believe in Santa Claus. I, I just, I, it's, it just blows my fucking mind how some people just sit there and they believe. That they believe. That they're not even conscious of the amount of times that they themselves lie during the course of the day. That they themselves spin shit. To try to, to try to advance their own fucking lives. Why would you think that a goddamn corporation would be honest? You know? This guy's saying advances in your computing, your music collection, and video conferences are strictly due to Moore law. Moore's law, excuse me. Computing power roughly doubles per square inch every 18 months. That means since 1978, it's doubled 28 times. Yes, I understand. I understand that computers have have, have advanced. Why hasn't gas mileage? It's just just fucking... And and this is another thing, too. So then he uses that same sort of ratio with the gas mileage. And then he goes back to what the fuck the gas mileage in the 70s was as if that wasn't a fucking lie. I I don't I give up. Sir, could you please watch this gas hole documentary? Could you please watch it? I know you're not a moron. It just frustrates me when people believe in corporations, that they're actually doing the right thing, despite the fact the amount of times that there's been unclassified information, and then you find out kind of what's really going on. And every time it's, you know, it's usually some diabolical shit. How many corporations have to dump shit into the water supply before you stop trusting them? You know? goddamn fucking place where they make the iPhone. There's people jumping to their deaths 
rather than because that's a better option than sitting there making another fucking iPhone. And then people actually believe the horseshit that corporations say, well, well, unless you want that iPhone to cost $9 million, that's the only way to build one. Really? Or maybe you yourself shouldn't make $80 million a fucking year or whatever you're making. The reason why... If you actually paid that guy a decent wage or that poor woman a decent fucking wage, the reason why then it's going to cost me way money, more money for the fucking I, iPhone is because you're not going to take a pay cut. And the reason why you make the amount of fucking money that you make is because you're exploiting poor people who live in third world countries. That's why you make $80 million a year, not because you're fucking worth it, you greedy fucking cunt. Oh, I'm on my high horse this fucking week. All right. A public service by Standard Oil Company. a short trip. Uh, looks like we're out of fuel. What sort of juice does this crate take? Uh, plutonium, I think. Oh, terrific. Maybe we can get a tow to the nearest plutonium station.